time to start solving algebra equations, but um, not this kind of equation. No, no, that's too complicated. You'll be able to do those eventually, but we need to start with the basics. So let's say you have this equation, x plus 3 equals 5, and you're told that you need to solve for x. Well, solving for a variable in algebra can be kind of scary, but the way you should think about an algebra problem is it's literally just a fill-in-the-blank problem. So if I phrase the question as blank plus 3 equals 5, and I told you you need to fill in the blank with a number to make it true, you might be able to figure out in your head that the number that should go in this blank is 2, because 2 plus 3 is 5. So you might be able to just do this in your head, and yes, that's the answer, x equals 2. However, once we get into more complicated algebra equations, you're not going to be able to just do it in your head like that, right? So the, we need to have some sort of system to figure out these algebra problems. And luckily, we do have a system, and it's called isolating the variable, which is just a fancy way of saying we need to get x, the variable, by itself. We need to get the letter by itself. Um, and by that we mean on by itself on this side of the equation. So x should be on the left side, or the right side, but either side is fine, and everything else should be on the other side. Now, how do we do that? Well, we can do anything we want to this equation. Any, we can add, subtract, multiply, whatever, as long as you do it to both sides of the equation. So in this case, we want to do something to the left side of equation that's going to cancel out this plus 3. So let's do the opposite of plus 3. The opposite of adding 3 would be subtracting 3. So if we subtract 3, then we cancel out these two things. Because if I gave you $3 and then took it away, well, your total amount of money didn't change. And your feelings would probably hurt. But we have x on the left side of the equation. And now on the right side, we have to do the same thing to the right side of the equation, or else this equation is not true anymore, it doesn't work. So we're going to subtract 3 here as well. 5 minus 3 is 2. And so we have our final answer of x equals 2. Let's look at another example, 5x equals 15. Now you may remember that in algebra, whenever we don't have a sign here, it's just a number and a letter next to each other, that means multiplication. So we can imagine a little multiplication sign here in between because it's 5 times x when we don't have a sign. So we need to get x by itself on the left side of the equation and move everything to the right. So how can we get rid of this 5 and leave x by itself? No, we're not going to subtract 5 from both sides because subtraction is not the opposite of multiplication. Before that worked with the addition, but in this case, 5 is being multiplied by x, so we need to do the opposite of multiplication, which is division. Now remember, we need to do the division by 5 on both sides of the equation. So in this case, these 5s cancel out, and all we're left with is x. Well, that's great, but remember, the other side of the equation needs to get the divided by 5 as well. So 15 divided by 5 is 3. And now we have x equals 3, and that's our answer. Here's another problem, what I'd like you to do is go ahead and pause the video and try this out for yourself, and then unpause and see how you did. Alright, so this is basically the same as our other problems, except we have a negative number in here, which might make things a little more complicated, but you'll see. So, x minus 17 equals negative 5. We need to get x by itself, we need to isolate the variable. So in this case, we need to get rid of this 17, this minus 17, actually. And we'll do the opposite of minus, which is plus. So we're going to add 17, these cancel, and you're left with just x. Well, that's great and all, but on the other side, we have to do the same thing. We need to add 17. And now we have negative 5 plus 17 which if you might be kind of confused on how negative numbers work, but in reality, it's just subtraction. So if you want, you can think of this as 17 minus 5. You're taking away 5 and then adding 17, which in that case is 12. And my pro tip would be if you're ever stuck on one of these negative problems and it's confusing you, you can just put it into a calculator if your teacher allows you, of course, and that'll give you the answer. So in this case, our final answer is x equals 12. Here's our final problem for today, and it has fractions. So go ahead and try this out for yourself and see how you do.
Okay, so fractions can seem complicated, but remember, fractions are just division. They're the same thing. So x is being divided by 3 here, and we need to get x by itself. So what's the opposite of division? Multiplication. So we are going to multiply this by 3. These cancel out, and you're just left with x. But remember, you need to do the same thing on the other side. So we're going to multiply this by 3. And if you don't know, basically whenever you multiply or divide uh, a fraction by a number like this, you need to do it to the top of the fraction. The bottom stays the same. So 7 times 3 is 21, and the bottom stays the same, which is 2. This is different from if you were adding or subtracting, in which case you have to get a common denominator. It's a little more confusing. So if you've got that down, you're ready to move on to multiple step equations, which you can learn how to do in this video. And you can always leave questions in the comments if you're confused, and I'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching.